So as we said in previous videos, uh, we looked at what happens when we connect resistors in parallel, uh, where the resistors are all the same value, and we saw some nice simple relationships between uh, the resistor value and the total resistance of the circuit. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to up the stakes a little bit, and we're going to see what happens when we connect resistors in parallel, where the resistors have different values. So let's build a little circuit. So I've got here an 18 ohm resistor and a 10 ohm resistor. So we'll connect those together. And these are connected in parallel with each other. And where we've got resistors connected in parallel, the current doesn't have to flow through one resistor to get to the next one. You can see that it is simply free to go to each resistor independently. So we've got our multimeter set up to measure resistance. So it's set to ohms and it's in the 200 ohm range. That means the maximum it will measure is 200 ohms. That's all we need it to measure. It won't go beyond that. So before we even plug the multimeter into the circuit to measure the total resistance, we should be looking at this and thinking, right, I can already tell a couple of things about this. We already know that the total resistance is going to be smaller than the smallest resistor value. So the total resistance for this circuit should be less than 10 ohms. That's what we should be finding, okay? So hopefully uh, we, we're familiar with that idea. And that's actually a really good exam tip because bear in mind this channel isn't just about helping you become a better electrician, it's about helping you to pass your exams as well. That's really important. So if you're in an exam situation and you've got a resistor or three resistors connected in parallel with each other and you've got multiple choice answers and only one of the answers is smaller than the smallest resistor, that is the right answer. There is no way it can be any of the other answers. So there's a little exam tip for you. But what we want to be able to do, because we're not happy with just passing exams, we want to really understand what we're doing here. We want to really get to grips with this. So what we're going to be looking at here is how we can figure out what the total resistance of this circuit will be, how we can calculate it accurately. So let's turn our multimeter on and plug it in. So we'll have a look here at our values. Now, when we turn the multimeter on, we should find we get a value that is smaller than the smallest resistor. So we're getting 6.9 ohms. Now, I already know from my calculations that that is uh, within the range that we expect it to be. Uh, it's not perfectly the right resistance, but as we've said many times before, we've got to take into account the tolerances of the resistors in the real world. So we're well within the range of the answer that we should be getting when we do this calculation. So we've got a 10 ohm resistor and an 18 ohm resistor connected in parallel with each other. But if you look at the value that's on the screen here, there's no really nice, neat relationship between this number and either of these two numbers. We can't just divide one, we can't just kind of infer what it will be just by looking at the values. We need to do a slightly more complicated calculation. Now, what we're going to consider now is what's called the product over sum rule. This rule can be used where you have two resistors in parallel with each other. That's what we're looking at. Any more than that, and you really need to use another rule that we'll look at in another video. But here we're going to use the product over sum rule. So let's do some maths. So what do we mean by product over sum? What is this rule that we're talking about here? Well, let's figure this out. So we've got the product over the sum. Now, if you have the product of two numbers, that means that you are multiplying those two numbers together. So for example, the product of three and six is 18 because three times six is 18. We've also got the sum down here, and the sum of two numbers is simply what we get when we add them together. So we've got the sum of 3 and 6 is 9, because 3 plus 6 is 9. So that's what we're looking at there. So what we can do is we can use this to calculate the total resistance of our circuit. And it's going to look something like this. We're going to say that RT, which is the total resistance, is equal to the product of R1 and R2, in other words, R1 times R2, over R1 plus R2. So there we've got the product of the two numbers over the sum. So let's carry this on down here. We've got RT, the total resistance, is equal to, and let's put the numbers in. So we've got 10 times by 18 divided by 10 plus 18. 
and then we can calculate what our total answer will be. So we're going to end up with RT is equal to 10 times 18, which is 180, divided by 10 plus 18, which is 28. So if we do 180 divided by 28, we'll get to our final answer for the resistance. But let's just have a quick look on the uh, calculator and see if there's an easy way of doing this. So over here, we've got our Casio FX85 GT Plus, a beautiful calculator that I love using in all my maths lessons and all my electrical principles lessons. It does everything that we need it to and a little bit more as well, but more on that in the future. So one of the nice functions of this calculator is this button here. So if you push this fraction button, it creates a fraction for you. But what you can do is just put the R1, R2 calculation straight in. So we put in the top 10 multiplied by 18. And then if we go to the bottom line, we can do 10 plus 18. So we can set that out exactly as we've set it out on our working out here. So let's just do this calculation and see what we get. Uh, we get 45 over 7. Now if we push uh, the SD button down here, it'll turn it into a decimal answer for us. And we'll see that the answer that we've got is 6.43, if we round it off to two decimal places, 6.43 ohms. So that 6.43 ohms is uh, what we should get for our total resistance. And as you can see, that's come out very, very close to our actual value of 6.9 ohms that we're measuring on the multimeter. So again, we're within a reasonable tolerance. So let's look at one more example of what we've got going on here. We've got, um, we've set up a different circuit this time. We've got a 27 ohm resistor connected in parallel with a 10 ohm resistor. And we're going to see what the total resistance of this is. Now you'll see that my multimeter isn't turned on yet. I've left that blank for the time being. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate first of all what we think the uh, resistance should be and then we're going to confirm the answer on the multimeter. Bear in mind it might not be exactly the right answer due to resistor tolerances but it'll be in the ballpark. So let's have a look at this then. Uh, we'll go through the maths and then we'll confirm the answer. So let's have a look at our calculation. So let's remember we're starting from this point. RT is equal to the product over the sum. Now let's just remind ourselves that the product of two numbers is when you multiply two numbers together and the sum is when you add them together. So we're going to take our two resistor values. So we're going to say RT is equal to R1 times by R2, which is the product of R1 and R2. And we're going to divide that by R1 plus R2, which is uh, resistor one plus resistor two. So the sum of those two resistor values. Therefore, RT will be equal to 27 times by 10 and then we've got two uh, sorry 27 plus 10 so those are the numbers that we're looking for so we can now say that our total resistance rt will be equal to 27 times 10 which is 270 divided by 27 plus 10 which is 37 and that's going to give us our total resistance for this circuit so let's have a look on the calculator. So we're going to again use our fraction button. So we push that there and that gives us a fraction option. And in the top, we're just going to put in to show you again, 27 times 10 divided by, so we'll move the cursor down, 27 plus 10. So that's our calculation. When we hit the equals button, we'll get a fraction, 270 over 37, which is right here. And then if we change that into its decimal form, we see that we come out with 7.297, uh, and that'll be 297, 297, 297. But what we're going to say here is we're going to round this off and say that we're going to have about 7.3 ohms. So the total resistance of this should be 7.3 ohms. So then we've done our calculation. Let's have a little look at the multimeter and see if we're getting the right answer. So we know we should be getting somewhere around 7.3 ohms. Let's see what we get. And that's great. The multimeter is showing there that we're within 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of an ohm, which is a really acceptable reading uh, when we've got such small values of resistors. So there we go. We've now seen what can happen, uh, how to calculate using the product over sum rule for two resistors connected in parallel.